Welcome to the uh, third video tutorial on Java and in this tutorial we're going to be discussing variables and how to do arithmetic with them. Now variables are very simple they're just places inside your program that can store data. So let's open up notepad and create a new program called variables and in this program we're going to do everything inside the main method so let's just type that out there we go okay so variables they are at the core of every single program you will make and they're very very easy to understand basically you declare a variable using the following syntax the data type which I'll explain later and the name of the variable and then equals initial value okay so that's it you can also declare them just by the data type and the name or by the data type and then name name two name three etc etc that's just a quick way of defining lots of the same data type so first let's do the first one. Oh, let let's t I'm going to tell you what a data type is first that would clear a lot of confusion up a data type is just literally the type of data you want to store in the variable and there's eight primitive data types and these are inbuilt into the Java language and they are the f the first three are no the first four are integer values and an integer is just a whole number now this the the only difference between these first four are the fact that some can hold um, big numbers some can hold very very big numbers and some can only hold small numbers so let's start with the smallest a byte now a byte data type can hold numbers between minus 127 and plus 128 I think it's around that so not very big so if we wanted to create a variable using the byte data type called my variable that's how we would do it just byte my variable and then equals 50 and now that's assigned the value of 50 to my variable the name my variable and that's really all there is to know about variables the I'll just go through all the other data types uh, of the which hold integers short holds s uh, bigger values but not extremely big so let's give it a value of 100 we'll just go up in 50s and then int holds integers so my int and that can hold about s plus minus six billion I think so that so if you're not sure which uh, uh, var in, 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 a variable you need to hold an integer value if you go with int you're pretty safe I mean it can hold pretty large values and then the final one which can hold integers is long and that can hold extremely big numbers I, I mean uh, they're so big I, I probably can't even say them um, so <laughs> my long equals 200 so that that's the integer values which you can store so that's just byte short int and long okay I'm sorry if I'm rushing through this but I've only got 10 minutes to uh, do this because I haven't signed up for a director account yet so 10 minutes is the max amount of time I can give you unfortunately I hope to sign up for a director account soon so what if we want to store say 2.25 we can't use any of these because they can only store whole numbers so 
we can either use float or double. Now, in the same kind of uh, style as these ones, float and double are the same, except for the fact that float can hold smaller numbers than double. Double can hold extremely big numbers, float can hold smaller numbers. Oh, not smaller, but it can still hold quite a lot large numbers, but not as large as double. So float my float equals 2.25 and that will compile without an error. Now double can also hold uh, uh, decimal values so my float will say that will equal 10.746 there. If we try to assign that to one of these like say we wanted to use it we try to assign my int to 10.746 that would give us a compilation error because ints can't hold decimal floating point numbers. So there's six data types. Now here's the seventh boolean. My bool, let's call that. And now booleans don't get disencouraged by the name, they're not really that complicated. It just means they can only hold two values, and that's true or false. So if I gave it the value true, there we go. That's initialized with the value of true. Or I could give it the value of false. There we go. Notice how the false and true weren't in inverted commas like that, because that would assign my ball to a string value, because the, the double quotes signify string but we don't want that we just want the false as a value rather than the uh, text now the final primitive data type is the char data type and that can hold single characters in and you show those in single quotes so a would be fine for that if I try to put AB like that, that is now a string, so that would give me a compilation error because it's no longer a character, so it can't be held in this. So, what if we did want to hold the characters AB? Then we would have to use the string object. Now, string isn't a primitive data type. We can tell this because it's got a capital letter there, so that's not inbuilt into the language, it's just an object which comes with the language because it's so commonly used. So my string then AB, great, we can store that. We can also store any length of string. Hello. Oh hello. Oh, what's going on with that? I keep hitting the uh caps lock key. Hello world. My variables are better than yours exclamation mark there that can hold that so that's the basic um well not basic that's really everything there is to know about variables i mean that that really is it i'll just get rid of these otherwise it won't compile because obviously that's not a real data type and they're not values but that's it. That's all you need to know about variables. It's just the data type, the name, and then the value. And that's it. So, I'm going to split this tutorial into two now because I'm not going to fit everything I need to say into uh, into this what, 10 minutes. So, this is all there is to know about variables. In the next one, which I don't know, I'll, I'll call it uh, three uh, Java tutorial three part one, and then the next one will be Java tutorial three part two. I will show you how to use simple arithmetic with these variables. And uh, okay, so go straight to the next video part two. I'll see you then.